A little bit more about EFR and the Engineered for Racing series, 7163, 7670, the Airworks series, S200s, S300s, how do these things work, how do the sizes work, what sort of horsepower do these things make, let's find out. Today you're going to learn something. Welcome back guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about the EFR range of turbos and I want to go over a little bit about the differences between the EFR 7163 and the EFR 7670. Now let's start off with the EFR 7163, it's a 550 horsepower capable turbo, it comes with different turbine housing options and there's a little bit of a myth and a fallacy surrounding response and these specific housings, specifically on the EA888 platform. Now, I know I keep referring back to the EA888 platform with most of these videos, but the reason I'm doing that is because these are a very popular choice when coming to upgrade on the EA888 the EA uh, platform. So you'll find that there's a, there's a couple of kit manufacturers out there that will use the EFR 7163, specifically with a twin scroll turbine housing on the EA888 because the twin scroll spools faster than the other, the other housing options. Now, I wanna just talk a little bit about that. The 7163 that I have, the two 7163s I have on the table here are twin scroll T4 inlet and V-band inlet. Both of them have got a V-band outlet as well. So we've got the T4 twin scroll which a lot of people believe the twin scroll design in the housing is responsible for the boost response on an EA888 engine. However, I beg to differ, and this is why. The EA888 has already got a, a separated manifold, or a tuned port manifold, if you want to call it that, where two of the cylinders exit the top port. This is basically our swirl adapter, which has got the same shape on the cylinder head. So two of the cylinders will exit out of the top port, two of the cylinders will exit out of the bottom port. Now, what basically happens is when using the twin scroll turbine housing, people forget about the fact that the twin scroll is from the family, the T25 family. That's the size family, the volute size that this specific turbine housing represents. And the AR rating is 0.80. On the V-band housing, it is also representing the T25, T28 family in terms of the size of the turbine housing, but the AR is 0.85. That is the main reason that there will be a boost response difference between the V-band and T25 inlet. They both share the AR85 turbine housing from the T25 family, and the AR80 smaller housing on the T20 on the twin scroll inlet. So while a lot of people will claim that the twin scroll design will give you great benefits, it's not just the twin scroll design, it's also the separated manifold design, which is built into the head of the EA888 specifically, as well as the fact that the AR of this twin scroll housing is smaller than the V-band. So why would you choose a V-band over the twin scroll? Well, here's why. We've got a twin, uh, a soil adapter which bolts directly onto the head, mates perfectly onto the turbine housing inlet, and because of the design of the, of the soil adapter, we increase the Mach speed as well as the pressure from the inlet coming out of the cylinder head to the outlet of the actual swirl adapter, which basically equalizes and will give you approximately the same linear response and spool characteristics as the T4 twin scroll would, but because of the lower back pressure, bigger AR turbine housing, you will make more power and you'll carry that power for a little bit longer up in the higher RPM range. So you'll find that your torque curve lifts up and carries for longer in the engine RPM range. So for the guys that want to run a responsive low down setup, that will carry the power a little bit longer in the high RPM range and help with lifting the torque curve up without having to play with boost response and the uh, boost control, I would suggest going with a slightly larger AR uh, turbine housing, which is the V-band in and V-band out, or the T25 in and V-band out, same AR85 turbine housing, together with the 
soil adapter. The T25 obviously is not going to uh, uh, bolt onto your soil adapter because it's a V-band connection only, but your V-band turbine housing will. I wanted to just talk a little bit more about the 7163's dimensions, the size of the turbine and compressor wheels. Okay, so on your 7163, the compressor wheel inducer measures 57 millimeters and the exducer measures 71. So there is your 71 in terms of the name of the turbo. The depiction of the turbo is a 7163. They're referring to the size in millimeters of the exducer, the larger side of the turbo, of the compressor wheel for the first two digits. And then they're referring to the 63, which is the larger side of the turbine wheel. Um, and that's what gives you your 7163. So just to recap, 57 inducer, 71 exducer, built-in diverter valve, boost control solenoid, etc. And on the turbine side, the size of the turbine wheel measures 56 millimeters on the exducer, which is what's visible in the camera right now, and 63 millimeters on the inducer, which is the larger side of the turbine wheel. This is a turbine wheel made from what they term gametai, it's titanium aluminide, which is probably a 30 to 35% weight reduction in terms of the material in comparison to your inconel turbine heads. Um, if you compare, there is another video on our YouTube channel where we've compared the weight of a genuine Garrett GT30 and GTX30 turbine wheel next to the EFR 7163. And the 7163 is approximately 35% lighter. However, the size of the wheel is one mil larger on the exducer and three mils larger than the Garrett on the inducer. So size for size, this is equivalent to a GT, GTX 30 family turbocharger, but the difference is these are internally wastegated, include diverter valves, include boost control solenoids, solenoids, etc, etc. So at the end of the day, when, you, when you're looking at purchasing one of these turbos, always keep in mind that you're getting a lot more than another product which is externally gated that requires you to purchase an external wastegate, blow off valve, etc, etc. Okay guys, so what I want to talk to you about now is the 7670. Now remember, the 7163s are 550 horse capable. And on the EA888, we've actually seen these turbochargers produce 550 wheel horsepower. Now, the 7670 is two sizes up from the 7163. The next size up would be your, six, your 7064, which we're not going to talk about today. And that is also a 550 horsepower capable turbo. That's why we don't, we're not going to talk about it. The next turbocharger up is your 7670. This is a 650 horsepower capable turbo. You will see 650 wheel horse on your EA888 uh, uh, motors. Uh, it is also internally wastegated. It has a diverter valve included. It has a boost control solenoid included as well as your actuator. Now, let's talk about the difference in, first of all, the turbine housing size, flange face, and AR. Now, if you look at the turbine housing flange face, it is a T3 inlet from the T3 family, as opposed to on the 7163s, a T25 family with your different flange faces. So this volute, as you'll notice, if I put it next to your V-band 7163, the camera will just zoom in over here and you'll actually see these two volutes next to each other, you'll notice the difference in size. There's quite a large difference in size, and you'll actually see that the T3 is larger than the T25. Although the number on the T25 is larger than the one on the T3. So this is a T25 turbine housing with an AR.85, which is physically smaller than a T3 turbine housing, AR 0.83. So the number is not what you look at, when you're starting to gauge size in terms of your turbine housing volutes, you look at the family size that it represents and then the numbers inside of that range. More on that in another video. Let's just get back to the 7670. If you have a look at the compressor housing, it has got a fully machined intake tract. It is ported shroud, in other words, anti-surge. And if you look where the diverter valve is situated next to your 7163, it's situated in a completely different position. And there's a lot of attention to detail that Borg Warner have gone, gone to in the design of this compressor housing. And I'll reveal some of that information on the screen with you guys just now. And then we're gonna talk about the compressor maps. 
Okay, guys, so as mentioned to you, diverter valve included, boost control solenoid included, fully machined intake track with a ported shroud or anti-surge housing. The compressor wheel measures 57 millimeters on the inducer, same size as the 7163, but it measures 76 millimeters, five millimeters larger on the exducer. For those of you that don't know, if there's any beginners watching, that is your inducer of the compressor, that is the exducer of the compressor. If you have a look at your turbine side, this is your T3 turbine housing volute. Let's compare it side by side to the T25 turbine housing volute. You'll notice that the, the volute is very, very narrow or much narrower on the T25 than it is on the T3. And that is because of the fact that it is, in a, it is operating in a larger family size. So T25 AR85, T3 AR83. This has a T3 inlet flange as opposed to your V-band inlet flange. The turbine wheel on this specific unit measures 61 millimeters and 70 millimeters. So if you're looking at the turbine wheel, your inducer will be 70 mils and your exducer, which is visible in the screen now, will measure 61 millimeters. The nice thing about these internally gated housings, obviously are the fact that they stay in the steel, but have a look at the size of this discharge valve. The valves range from 36 mils all the way up to 42 millimeters. The valve size on this internally gated turbocharger will be able to flow a lot better than an external wastegate and offer you a much faster linear response than running an external wastegate with the additional plumbing. All right, guys, let's have a look at the compressor map for the 7670. Um, this specific compressor map will actually show you the compressor wheel inducer, which is the smaller side on the inlet, 57 millimeters, and the exducer, which is the wider side on the outlet or exit, 76 millimeters. Now, there's a few things I want to just show you on the compressor map. First of all, your P2C ratio, your pressure ratio. This is a ratio between atmospheric pressure and gauge pressure. That here, 1.0 is in bar and it does not indicate one bar gauge pressure it indicates one bar atmospheric pressure so this vertical gauge on the left hand side depicts absolute pressure includes atmospheric as if you were at the coast so one bar atmospheric pressure that's the outside pressure and it goes up when you get to 2.0 on the gauge it will indicate one bar when you get to 3.0, it will indicate two bar. When you get to 4.0, it will indicate three bar. As if you were at the coast, always assume that you've got one bar atmospheric pressure outside. The next thing I wanna show you is the width of this compressor map. The wider the compressor map, for as much of the vertical axis, will depict a very efficient compressor which has a lot to offer in terms of power delivery over a wider engine size. Now, I wanna to just touch on the maximum efficiency. The maximum efficiency of this compressor map is 75%. That spans from approximately 1.8 P2C, which is 0.8 of a bar, gauge pressure, up to just over two bar gauge pressure and in the maximum efficiency range at these pressures you will see that you operate from around about 260 horsepower all the way to about 420 horsepower so that sweet spot has got a lot to offer now the nice thing about this compressor is the fact that you will start to see maximum power at approximately 1.8 bar gauge pressure all the way up to approximately 2.6 to 2.7 bar gauge pressure. Now if you have a look at 4.0 on your pressure ratio uh, uh, graph you'll notice that that's 3 bar gauge pressure. At 3 bar gauge pressure you are still sitting at between 
70 and 72, so around about 71% efficiency. You've only lost 4% efficiency from your maximum efficiency range at three bar gauge pressure. If we drop that to 2.6 bar, which is quite a high boost pressure, you'll see that you're situated approximately at 73% efficiency. It is absolutely stunning to note that at, very, at varying boost pressures, gauge boost pressures, you will find yourself operating in the maximum efficiency islands of the specific compressor. Okay guys, so that's the gist of the EFR 7163 and the EFR 7670. A little bit of differences between the two and horsepower differences, flange faces, ARs of turbine housings, and together with the swirl adapter, a little bit more about what sort of boost response you can expect on an EA888 um, platform, along with a slightly larger turbine housing, which is the V-band in and out. I hope you guys learned something there. Post comments down below, uh, interact with us. Let's have a look and see if we can answer any questions, if any suggestions or requirements in terms of additional videos to outline certain things. Let us know, we'll get right to it. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Remember to subscribe and like. See you next time.